Hey everyone, welcome back. In this SQL tutorial, we are going to learn about the data types. Now, as we are working with MySQL database, so I'll be covering the data uh, data types for MySQL database. Now, if you want to learn about all the data types, so basically the best way is to go, go to the official website of that particular database. Say for example, you are using Oracle, uh, go to the Oracle data types and see what all data types are there most common ones are across all the database same so you don't need to worry about that and because we are not working or we are not basically trying to learn sql and be a database administrator we are learning it for the testing purpose and uh, the security testing purpose uh, could be the other uh, knowledge that we want to learn. So in that particular case, we do not need to worry too much about the internal working of all these data data types, right? That's the first thing. If you are really keen, go ahead and learn it. Not, not a problem. So if I want to say that MySQL data type, so I'll simply search for that and let's see, let's go to the official website. So basically dev.mysql.com and this is the official website of the MySQL and we can go to this link and see what all data types are being there and you'll see this is the high level list of data types so we have numeric you have uh, date and time string spatial json now what are the most commonly one that you will see day in day out numeric you will definitely see day in day out date and time yes string all of these top three you will see almost everywhere when you are working with databases right uh, all others are also there but then how much you are going to use that's not necessarily that you will be using them a lot okay but then yes they are there and what are some of these data types i'll cover what are some of the internal details now before that i would like to mention basically in very raw language why do we need or every language has the data type right so why what is the relevance and why do we need them now say for example there is a kitchen right and in the kitchen or you have a refrigerator now in refrigerator you want to organize things in a proper way right you do not want to put everything you put put say for example potatoes or you put the vegetables and then on top of that you put some juice and then you put some eggs and you do not want to do like that right so similarly database is uh, the way of structuring the data and putting it properly so that you can retrieve it in a proper way right now when you define the database and you define the table you want to basically segregate those cells that what you are going to put in that particular cell and that's where data data types come in picture because they help you okay yes this is a type of integer right so i define a cell or column as an integer and i can only put integer values there in that particular column of a table if i want to put strings for example this is a student database that i'm defining and student will have the first name middle name last name they'll have the roll number the marks that they receive so all of that information so for the roll number yes i know i can store it as an integer right because it's a numeric value so it can't have the decimal values because it should be the whole number so i can define it as a whole number or as an integer so there i have to use the integer data type right so the numeric data type wherein we'll get one of the integer data type right or whole number so that's where data types are helpful so very basic but i thought i'll cover this that if you want to logically store the data whether you want to store your name if you are storing your name obviously it will be the string right it will be the set of characters that define your name so you will define it as a character or or var char in database if you are storing a roll number it's a basic integer whole number if you want to store uh, the decimal number you have to define it as a decimal data type so these are all data types okay so that's the basic concept behind data type now this is about mysql data type okay then if you say for example you are working with oracle all right so the best way go to google and um, sorry open gmail go to google and search for oracle data types and they will show you the official oracle website right so if you go to this database or uh, data, uh, the the website these are some of the built-in data types you can go through and look at these now for example care where care and care and where care these are all 
common across the different databases so you will find a lot of similarities so that's that's the whole point of these databases and sort of similarities being defined so that if a person switches from one database to another the 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 dissimilarities are not too much right so differences are not too much so that's why uh, you will find most of them are almost similar. It doesn't matter which database you are using. Now let's go ahead and dive deep, deep dive into what are some of the data types in MySQL because we are working with MySQL server. So if we go to numeric data type, so as I mentioned, if you are using, if you are storing the roll number, yes, obviously you will be using it as an integer. Now numeric data type, you have different values there, right? So integer type, you have integer, int, int small int, tiny int, medium int, big int, right? So what all these mean so basically depending on what size of the particular number you want to store you define it in that way now why is that because you if say for example you know that your roll number finishes um, from in, in a particular class you do not have more than 100 students right so your roll number will start from one and finish at 100 so just 100 uh, up to storing for the numbers up to 100 you do not want to define it as an integer which takes the numbers up to 65,000 for example right so if we go to this integer types let's see now if you know that this is the storage byte right so storage byte is one and the minimum um, value signed is 128 right so minimum value unsigned is zero and maximum is 127 okay so this is basically what the range of integers you can put if you define as tiny int int, int. If you define as small int, this is the range that you can put, right? If you define it as medium, these are the number of values that you can put the minimum and the maximum. And these are the byte or the storage. So as you define the integers, if say, for example, I define a data type as integer, I know that the storage byte is basically four, right? Which is, which will consume the memory, the space. Okay. So if I do not need four bytes for each of the value, why do I need to define it as an integer? I can define it as a tiny int when I know that only 100 numbers are being to be kept, right? So that's where all these database architects, um, in order to improve all the performance and things like that, they define it like that, okay? So you have different options here to define integer, uh, small int and all, okay? Now, I'm explaining this uh, just to make you aware about the data type because we'll be using this and we have used it to define the tables and the columns of the table, right? So you have the decimal. If you have a decimal value to store, you can use decimal or numeric data type. You have float and double. So all of that comes into the numeric data type, okay? Then you have date and time data type wherein if you want to store the date, date time or timestamp, then say for example, a person puts an order uh, on a website. So in that particular case, the database needs to store the date, time or timestamp basically when the order was picked uh, or placed when the order was shipped. All of that will help people to keep track of basically all the order delivery mechanism, right? So that's where date and time data types are helpful. So these are some of the details you can go through and read. But most importantly, go and read uh, the date, date, time, timestamp, etc. Very simple, nothing to worry about in these. And I do not want to get into too much detail and, and confuse you. But um, this is just, you know, like storing the date values or timestamp, right? Basically, day, day, uh, year, month and date. So accordingly, right? So different formats. And this is not the job of the tester. So when somebody dis defines the database, they'll anyways, it will be there. And you will be basically fetching the data from the data database and analyzing that for your testing purpose right so you need to be aware of it but you need to don't need to be real expert in it right because you are not going to be a database engineer so this is all about the date and time data types then we have the string another very important ones okay so in the string basically car and where car so if i want to store the name uh, first name last name etc then we know that it's a character right a set of characters string um, then what is the difference between car and where car let's quickly cover that because that's the most important sort of interview question so car and where car are almost similar the difference is in the maximum length when you have uh, you are you are placing the data there so say for example if you see here this table explains ca difference between car and where car very clearly okay so that's why i didn't create any of the slides for this one because it doesn't make sense to unnecessarily keep 
creating the slides. So if say for example, I am storing just the null value, right? And if I defined the data type for that particular column as car and the length as four. So even though the blank value is there, four bytes will be occupied in that case if you define the care data type okay character data type if there are two then still four bytes will be stored because two of two for these two characters and two for the spaces right so always if you define a data type as care whatever amount of characters that you have defined in this case it is four those many bytes will be occupied anyways in your memory in your um, database memory now if it is a var care right so what var care does is if it is blank it will just use one byte okay if there are two characters if because here as well we have these four we have defined var char as four if there are two characters then it will use two plus one okay which is basically three bytes if there are four then it will use four plus one so any number of defined characters any number of characters that you have defined that plus one byte is utilized for the var char okay so var char is preferred basically over char unless until you necessarily need the character data type okay so this is the difference in terms of um, char and var char now moving back uh, the next one is basically blob and and text type right so sometimes there is a data or just a long sort of text that you want to store so instead of defining it as a character or var char you define it as a blob okay so binary large object blob is binary large large object or basically storing the text values okay if you are fetching all the html data from any particular website and want to store it into a database um so say for example web scraping and all then in that case you use this blob or the text type to basically store the text and text has you know tiny text text medium text long text so all of these you can basically as and when you are working go ahead and refer it you don't no need to memorize and by heart everything it is it is i i believe it's not a good use of of the time uh, when you have everything available like learning data type mem memorizing data type it's not going to make sense right so that's about uh, the blob and text uh, now if we move back um, we have spatial json i think that should be it for now because new numeric date time and string is what will be working uh, at maximum and you need to be well aware with these but then yes json um, if you have you know a spatial then you have these uh, some of the spatial that you can do you can basically go ahead and um, read about but not very much required in terms of as a as a test engineer okay uh, for your learning yes you can go ahead and go through these data types if you want to learn more details about the data types within the SQL right so these are the MySQL if you are using some other databases you can go ahead and read the list about that but most important one is integer date time that will be working with and the string different string data types okay so now once you have understood about the data type right now where do we use it right so if you see here this is this these are our two tables right this is our database and then we have defined a customer table right so now here you will see that when we define the table we have find that customer id is a varchar okay then customer name is varchar and the length is 40 street is varchar length is 255 these are all the varchar uh, data type that these columns will contain the character into these columns and that's what we have defined here right so if we try to insert a value in the customer name we try to insert anything which is not uh, where care it should throw an error because we want to basically do not want to have unnecessary or garbage data we want to logically organize data as in fridge that this is the compartment to hold the integer or basically hold the juice then we'll put juice there this is the compartment so similarly similar analogy in this case this compartment customer name is for the name so character basically the name should go in this compartment right customer id is basically the, the ids then the id should go there now if we go to the orders you will see that i have this order id we know that order will be the integer incremental order so it has been defined as an integer then you have this order date as a date time and the purchase amount as an integer purchase amount will be decimal but as of now i have just defined it as an integer uh, but actual scenarios you will see that it's more of a decimal value because it could be in in decimals as well right 
So this is where these data types. So when you define the table, you define that yes, in this table, this particular column will hold integer. This particular column will hold characters. This particular column will hold var caps, right? Variable characters. So all of that that is being defined, and that's where data types are being helpful and used into the SQL and databases. Okay. So that's all for the introduction part of the data types in the database. I hope this was helpful. In the next tutorial, I'll cover the data types. I'll be creating a new table and I'll explain you how these data types are defined and how you define or use the data types to define or create the different tables using these data types. So thank you very much for watching.